good morning to all of you who will join us this morning. Truly, we wait for the Lord in so many ways. We wait, await the word of the Lord proclaimed to us. We wait for the Eucharist that celebrates our oneness in Christ. We await the Lord speaking in our lives and through us to others. So let us join together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. As we light the seconds, the uh, first two candles of this second week of Advent, our hope is called to deepen in the light that fills us today. So we call upon the Lord to bring us that hope that will lead us uh, to our Lord as we now join in calling upon the Lord's mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Let us pray. With tender comfort and transforming power, you come into our midst, O God of mercy and might. Make ready a way in the wilderness, clear a straight path in our hearts, and form us into a repentant people that the return of your Son may find us watchful and eager for the glory Christ reveals. We ask this through him whose coming is certain, whose day draws near, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Let us now listen to the Lord's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, 
herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me taste your mercy like rain on my face here in my life. Show me your peace. Let us see with our own eyes your day breaking bright. Come on. saving presence is close at hand glory as near as our land let me taste your mercy like A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you not waiting, not wanting any to perish, 
but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. you. This is the beginning of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Here begins the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In Isaiah the prophet, it is written, I send my messenger before you to prepare your way. A herald's voice in the desert crying out, Make ready the way of the Lord, clear him a straight path. Thus it was that John the baptizer appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance, which led to the forgiveness of sins. All the Judean countryside and the people of Jerusalem went out to meet him in great numbers. They were being baptized by John in the River Jordan as they confessed their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist. His food was grasshoppers and wild honey. And the theme of his preaching was, one more powerful than I is to come after me. I am not fit to stoop and untie his sandal straps. I have baptized you in water. The one more powerful will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. In these times, 
in every time of history, comfort sounds like a great word, a great experience, which we hear today uh, as the prophet Isaiah gets the command from the Lord God, comfort my people. Comfort the people of Israel who were going through a long period of trial and oppression, exile from Jerusalem, their home. And today the Lord wants to extend comfort to all of you, you the people of God of Our Lady of Lourdes, during this long and difficult year, which now we are asked to do even more to shelter and to avoid crowds during these coming holiday days. As God promised comfort for Israel during their wilderness time, so also comfort for us when we welcome into our inmost minds and hearts a way, ability to listen to the Lord, to let the Lord speak that comfort even in the silence, to offer it to us with great confidence and to strengthen us in the challenges ahead. For the Lord is always there for us. We hear also, here is our God, which is an assurance that the Lord on our journey through the rest of this year and into the new year, he will accompany us. We can find comfort and assurance in his presence. And yes, right here where you are this morning, in your homes and with your families, here, there is your God. Now in the cold and dark month of December, Advent offers us hope in a breakthrough of divinity entering our humanity, which we will celebrate at Christmas, and light entering the darkness of our lives in any way we experience that. Yes, take comfort, my people, to hear God's voice, which is always one of assurance, one that lifts us up when we feel down. When we embrace the gift of that divine comfort, we are entrusted ourselves with a sacred mission to be heralds of good news and of hope for others. As we await the return of Christ in glory, we are sent to rouse the minds and hearts of the downhearted, the depressed, the discouraged, the isolated, in whatever way we can reach out uh, by message of text, email, phone message, or across six feet or beyond. Whatever we can do to bring comfort to bring hope to others is the best possible Christmas gift we can give. John the Baptist, as we hear, is our Advent guide. He pointed out Jesus. He points to him today as the promise of newness and hope in this time in which we are challenged. And true hope is not about wishful thinking. Sometimes we may say, you know, I wish this or that would happen. It's deeper than just a kind of a wishfulness. Hope based on Jesus is powerful and it leads us 
to the uplifting actions that can advance the world around us to a more just society to, and lead to a more inclusive and caring community around us, around us here at Our Lady of Lourdes, even through technology. To borrow the words of a uh, theologian of the last century, Johann Metz, uh, hope, hope is subversive. In other words, it's able to get through because it recognizes, true hope recognizes obstacles that may be there and creates alternative ways, solution. Hope gets away and is able to go through the fog of our confusion. It's able to get through our fears and our resistance and our sense that, oh, probably it's not going to come about. Um, so let us pray for one another this December and in the new year so that we can extend a powerful hope to others, extend it outward through our prayer. I've learned that reading the newspaper or seeing the news is not just being informed. It's creating objects, it's situations, people for whom we can pray. It's an opportunity to be aware so that can become part of our prayer, a prayer full of hope, the power of Christ to bring healing and liberation in these difficult days. The reading we heard today from St. Peter sums it up. What sort of persons ought we to be? Conducting ourselves in holiness, waiting for and hastening the day of the coming of the Lord. As we await new heavens and new earth. Faith uh, accompanies hope, and so we celebrate our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. True hope opens to generous love. And it is in that generous love that we lift up today the prayers, the pleading on behalf of the needs of our world. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, pray that the ministers of our church and leaders of our nation will model for us care for the most vulnerable of our nation and our world. Lift up, O church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, God. We pray that while disasters of war, of famine, and the COVID pandemic rage throughout the world, that we will be inspired in our own neighborhoods to find ways to relieve the suffering of others. Lift up, O church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. We pray for the strengthening of our faith in these uncertain times. For surely the Lord comes blessing us as we prepare to meet him. Lift up, O church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. We pray for all involved in designing technology which has enabled gathering of our parish community via streaming and Zoom, as well as increasing mobility and communication for persons with disabilities. Lift up, O church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, come. We pray for those who are sick and suffering in pain especially first responders, health care workers, Carlos Solorio, Vivian Solorio, Cece Solorio, Anais Guerrero, Roberto Torres, Cristina Ramirez, Gregory Ng, Juanita Reyes, Mike Kretsch, Ashley Olding, Patrick Sullivan, Marilyn Coffey, Eric Justinson, Anne Hurley, and those who are ill with the coronavirus, including their families. May God relieve them and offer them hope. Lift up, O church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, God. We pray for those who have died before us in death, especially Hilda Lee, Ida Pound, Mildred Williams, and those who have died of the coronavirus. May they rest peacefully in the arms of Christ. Lift up, O church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, God. We pray for our own intentions, for whom this Mass is being offered, the people of the parish. Lift up, O church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy, God. We 
pray for our own intentions. Lift up, O oh church, this world to God. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. Wondrous and faithful God, we turn to you this day. And in the midst of the sufferings of your people in so many places, we ask you to send forth a renewed hope and comfort, the works of justice and peace to remove the barriers to fullness of human life. We ask your mercy and blessing through Christ our Lord. my sisters and my brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord in your goodness be pleased with our prayers and offerings and since we cannot merit anything of ourselves come to our rescue with your mercy through Christ our Lord. In the midst of all kinds of experiences in life, those that give us fear or worry or those that give us joy and peace, we celebrate this Eucharist, which is making present at once the dying and the rising of Christ, so that sharing that here in the Eucharist sharing it 
spiritually in your homes, we may enter through difficult moments and times and challenges already feeling the power of Christ within us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to salvation. That when he comes again in glory and all is at last made revealed, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, holy Lord God of hosts, holy, holy, holy Lord, holy You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you stretch out to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake was handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of his death and resurrection, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to gift us with his very Spirit that takes away everything that separates us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, all of your lay ministers, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us here now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with your blessed apostles, with St. John the Baptist and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and language who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 As Jesus has taught us to pray with confidence, so shall we pray this day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as we await the blessed hope and coming again of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my own peace I give you. Look not to our sins, but look to the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace that comes only from Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. And let us acknowledge and share that peace.
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who share the Lord's table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Oh, oh. 
Lord, you have nourished us with the food of life through our partaking of this sacrament of spiritual communion. Teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to cherish those of heaven through Christ our Lord. Well, the announcements today you'll see come up on the screen. We have our continuing uh, mass programs that we have on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, as you'll see posted, and our prayer services as well. Uh, our upcoming events, the slide will show you that we have our December 8th at 7 p.m., the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. It will also con coincide with the celebration of life for Denise Gums. We'll be celebrating her life on that night as well, as she was very close to the uh, our mother, our Lady of Lords. So, and also check on the other schedules for the uh, December 24th and 25th Masses as well. On December 15th, you'll see in there too, it's Deck the Homily. Father James wanted to do that, and it was a 7 p.m. Zoom Mass on December 15th. It's preparing for Christmas through a um, prayer and conversation on the readings that are coming up. And you can contribute to the homilies that Father Jim and Father James will eventually share with our widened community. So please check on that. And we go back to Father Jim for the final blessing. As we go forth, uh, I hope, not as an I hope so, but in the deep hope that Christ gives us uh, comfort to all of you, wherever you are today and during this week, the comfort of knowing and being convinced in faith that Christ is with us, surrounding us, carrying us uh, through each moment, so that then we can extend that comfort to others, that reassurance, that deep hope, so let us ask the Lord's blessing. Lord, you who have blessed us this day with the gift of life, with the gift of faith, with hope and with love, help us to embrace these gifts in the comfort of your love. Help us to extend these gifts to those around us by our inner spirit, by our caring, for them through our prayer that reaches far beyond what we can personally reach. We ask you to bless us in this mission, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let us go forth today in the assurance of God's tender and loving mercy. Right.